The gospel says that Jesus understood human nature. Then he would understand that some things are kind of hardwired into us as human beings. Some social patterns seem to be there when we're very young and last throughout our lives. Like one of them is, because you notice this in little children and in people as they get older, is this sense of fairness. Things have to be fair. And little children will fight over that. That's not fair. You think, well, it is. No, it's not. So they have big fights over fairness. They quickly begin to understand when they've been cheated in their mind or when it's not equal here, it's not fair. Another one that seems to be hardwired into us is that we seem to enjoy or need to cut deals. So this is the deal. You know, you see little children doing this. Okay, if you do this, I'll do this. And then if they don't fulfill their end of the deal, we had a deal. And you didn't fulfill your end of the deal. And that, hap you know, that still happens as adults. People write books like The Art of the Deal. And people want to have a good deal when they're buying something. It's hardwired into us. The problem becomes when we have that hardwired human nature assume that God is the same way. That God is doing things just like us. That God is hardwired that way to make a deal. I think that's what Jesus is reacting to in the gospel today. He's just come from a wedding. In John's gospel, he's been up at this wedding celebration that his family was involved in. He had his disciples there. There he made everybody happy by making 40 gallons of wine so that they could have a good time. And then it's Passover, so they walk down to Jerusalem to be there at the temple. And he does this. Now oftentimes we use this passage to say to people, it's okay to get angry. Jesus himself was angry, look, at when he cleansed the temple. There's nothing in that gospel that says Jesus was angry. It just says he had zeal. But he gives us that sentence that I think explains why it mattered to him. He doesn't call it the temple. He calls it his father's house. And you have turned my father's house into a marketplace. Now what was going on there was required by the law. So you think, okay, so it's, it's not the practice itself that was the problem. People were required by the law to offer for sin offerings or thanksgiving offerings, uh, especially at Passover time, the, the lambs would be being offered. It was required by the law. So the easiest thing to do was to buy it at the temple. You could buy it outside of town but then you got to drag that lamb all over town with you, you know, walking around, or the dove, or whatever else you might have bought for an offering. You had to make sure it was clean because it could not have any kind of problem. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a good offering. So you could assume that the ones you're buying at the temple were perfect. And then at the temple, you couldn't use Roman money because Roman money had Caesar on it and Caesar considered himself a god and so nobody at the temple was going to use Roman money. You had to change the money 
to buy the lamb or the dove or the calf. It was all required by law. So how did it become a marketplace? I think what Jesus was witnessing in people is they were coming there not in the midst of their own spiritual uh, self, but out of their human need to cut a deal. So God, <laughs> here's the deal. I'm going to upgrade a little bit from a dove to a lamb. And if I do this, you are going to do something for me, God. You might find yourself doing that <laughs> once in a while, right? Okay, God, somebody I love is really sick. And if you heal them, I <laughs> will offer you this. Please, God, take care of this. Let's cut a deal. It becomes the marketplace of spirituality. People aren't coming there with the intent of what the law had put there to begin with. This was not about a deal between God and us. This was purely recognizing everything God had done and saying thank you. Not a deal. Purely thanks. Thanks God. Or if I've sinned, <laughs> this is not a deal. This is what God expects. I need to sacrifice to be redeemed here. The animal dies so that I'm forgiven. Which is why Jesus dies. So that we're forgiven. It's that same theme. That deal cutting even gets in the way of those commandments we heard at the very beginning today. Those famous ten in their entirety. But I think oftentimes we see that as a deal. God will be our God if, if, if you follow the commandments. And if you don't follow the commandments, burp, sorry, you're out of here. You're no longer mine. That's not what it says. And that's not why God gives it. Those commandments were given to form a people. They had just gotten out of slavery, as you heard in the first commandment. Who's talking to you? The one who set you free. You were slaves. This one set you free. And here's what you need to do to form a people. Because most of those commandments are about how you treat one another. How you treat your neighbor. They are a gift to the community to form a people. To make the community function well together. Nothing about a deal trying to earn God's love. That's not in there. It's about how we treat one another, how we live together. Can you imagine if people just ignored those kind of commandments? Well, I can steal whatever I want. You can? Yeah. I, I can do whatever I want. I can lie to whoever I want to lie to. I can have sex with whoever I want to have sex with. I can kill anybody I want to kill. No. No, we're not these little independent individuals who can do whatever we want in spite of what our culture says. No. No, it's about 
being gifted by God with ways of being a community. I'm sure it was shocking for those slaves hearing these rules for the first time that they got a day off. What? We get a day off? They had worked their entire lives as slaves. And now the rule was, you must stop one day. And you can't even have anybody else work that day. Not your slaves, not any aliens in the land, nobody, not even your beasts can work that day. You get a day off, a day to relax and enjoy, have fun. For slaves, that might have been a hard thing to do. I've worked every day. It's a gift. The commands are a gift. Everything from God is gift. We have to work real hard to make sure we don't lower God to our human level and begin to talk to God about fairness. Because we will never, ever, ever be able to respond in any way to the amazing generosity God has given us. Fairness? We can't even, we're not even at the table. We never will be when it comes to God. And everything he asks of us his gift and should be seen that way. It's not a deal. God will always love you. God gave his life for you. The things he asks you to do are gifts as well. To form you into a people that looks as generous and loving as God himself.